Hi, my name is Jesper Kjær. I'm heading up the Data Analytics Center at the Danish Medicine Agency. And thank you for allowing me to present our work within the Data Analytics Center and on the Big Data Task Force, a joint initiative between the heads of medicine agencies and the European Medicines Agency. I'd just like today to take you through a few slides to uh, kind of set the scene and explain our work around uh, healthcare data and the use of artificial intelligence. So the vision for the DKMA Data Analytics Center, as stated here, is really to be a world-class data analytics center that through the use of clinical trial and real-world data, using advanced analytical methods wants to increase the accessibility of safe and effective medicines and medical devices. Now that vision goes hand in hand with the thinking around clinical trial data from industry that we are now able to receive and analyze as part of our assessment of new medicines. This type of data is seen in context with healthcare data not as big as the industry may see it, or we historically have seen it. Actually, there's a lot more important data in the healthcare data residing in the electronic health record systems. And even that data is in comparison with other data sources, actually not that big either. So the health data outside of the healthcare system, coming from activity trackers, sensors, grocery shopping, etc., is actually a magnitude bigger. And that is an interesting uh, approach to consider healthcare data from any sources. So there are numerous e-sources, as we call them, that come from variables, that come from devices, that come from registries, or from shopping, as we just discussed previously. All of this, to us, comes together as what we call new data sources for precision medicine. So that will be part of the behaviomics through the shopping and the sensors, the clinical data, the variables, and even social media data. And all of that combined with the omics data that generates from genomics and proteomics, and also importantly, imaging data. All of that make up a digital print of us as individuals, thus really supporting us in enabling precision and personalized medicine. Now, this way of thinking has actually been forward through our personalized medicines initiatives in Denmark and through the use of an establishment of the National Genome Center that aims to, over the next four years, to have up to 60,000 patients having a full genome sequence established and thus supporting the personalized medicine and treatment of these patients in the healthcare system. Beyond this, there's also the National Biobank that currently hosts more than 25 million biological samples across the entire Danish population, really taking blood samples from the time of birth uh, since 1982, and uniquely being able to combine that data with the uh, Danish registries and through the CPR number, and through that really create what is written on the wall as you enter the Biobank facility, that the epidemiologist's dream would be Denmark when an entire country is a cohort as we have samples from newborns and through the entire lifespan. All of that opportunity of all of this data is really being brought to life now with the latest life science strategy has been just, just has been released. There are 38 initiatives in there which I would just like to highlight one of them, is the establishment of a secure national analytics platform where we can combine all of these data sources to then do the research and do the life science necessary insights into how uh, treatment and diseases are progressing. That goes well in hand with our vision and strategy for the Danish Medicine Agency for the past five years. and. Uh, we really aim to be Europe's best in class. We think we've succeeded in doing so. Um, and we are continuously striving to use data analytics in this context. Because through the establishment of the Danish uh, the, the Data Analytics Center, we are really bringing all of these data sources together, utilizing the National Genome Supercomputer. This is where we can take the real world data the industry's CDISC data and our own pharmacovigilance data and generate new insights into 
the effectiveness and more importantly the safety of medicines as we evaluate these for market authorization and even for the safety surveillance following that. This also goes hand in hand with uh, the strategies put forward until 2025 by the European Medicines Agency on the regulatory science and on the network strategy uh, put forward by the heads of medicine agencies. It really spells out AI and data analytics throughout these reports uh, with great ambitions of uh, moving this forward. A mechanism to do so has been the big data steering group was put forward a work plan of 11 really ambitious tracks. I won't go through all of these today, but just take a zoom into the massive activity that's actually going uh, well underway on this. If we go into the network capability to analyze, this is where the important work around the use of AI, both in regulatory and in life science, is being placed. Rather recently, we held a workshop on the use of AI uh, to inform us about what priorities we should take out of the report and uh, how to execute on those going forward. The two-day workshop held here back in April had a focus initially on setting the scene on AI by pulling in some really high level and important visionary researchers uh, of the paradigm shift in technology in healthcare through the use of AI. Then we moved on to cover the application of AI in real settings, so in medicines and in medicines regulation, where we had a number of regulatory agencies articulating how they use or are about to use AI in their work, but also to listen to industry of their real use of AI. And there's definitely still a lot of work to be done, but it's actually quite well underway in, in many of these cases. On the second day, we had the look at the recommendations for actions, really coming out of the strategies that are being put forward by many agencies, also from the European and North American context. In the discussion round, we brought in a number of really important stakeholders from the inspectors, researchers, academia, the consumers, the med tech, the patient organizations, healthcare professionals, pharmaceutical industry, and also innovation networks across Europe, really informing us about what are the priorities that we should have in order to advance the use of artificial intelligence in Europe. Prior to the uh, workshop, we had a survey sent out in which we uh, asked for a number of uh, prioritizations of the recommendations we have in our report. And here you can see the result where it's clear to see that some of the top scorings were to develop framework for uh, assess and validate AI and international collaboration and engage with agents, with experts uh, from the agencies. During the discussion, when we had the priorities uh, revalidated, it became clear that the top priorities across the stakeholders were slightly different. Uh, so building and establishing, developing the framework were amongst the top three, but also building uh, external collaboration with academia and uh, research institutions was a key priority. When we talked to particular, the consumers, they had focused on the ethical use and establishing the trust in this. So this is important for us to remember as we continue our journey into artificial intelligence. And also MedTech, who made it clear to us that where they are at is really they need the sandboxing environment, they need access to data, they, they need the ability to really further develop uh, the technology itself. Also a very important uh, component for us to include in our continuous work. Now, the way we're going to do this in the Danish Medicine Agency is really through our governance structure and our ecosystem. So we have established a governance structure that brings together the universities to collaborate with us. It's the four biggest universities in the countries, each of them represented through their faculty of health. And in addition to that, the Danish Technical University and the IT University. We truly believe in cross-disciplinary collaboration where healthcare and IT and innovation come together. And through that mechanism of the steering committee, we are able to establish analysis working groups and expert groups to develop what is very much needed in terms of new tools and new methods to analyze big data and to apply artificial intelligence. 
all of that expertise will then take to the network and to the EMA, and also in collaboration with other national competent authorities, really further develop the use of AI analytics across Europe. As one example of how we are going about modernizing the way we work, I can take, a, take you through our pharmacovigilance process as it is today, in which we've actually modernized the way we get reports on side effects coming in from the citizens, from the general practitioners, and from the secondary healthcare in the hospital setting through our databases, through web services, fully integrating the IT systems aggregating that into our side effect database from which we can do the signal analysis and also jointly together with other national competent authorities. What we are putting on top of this and has already proven to be rather successful is the use of the Danish registries to further then understand the signal and analyze any potential side effects. You will by now be able to find reports out there that specifically are addressing the signal analysis related to some of the COVID-19 vaccines, and we'll continue to use these registries for further surveillance. Now, as this massive undertaking of COVID-19 vaccine rollout is underway, we also need to realize that the workload this creates is, is actually quite substantial. So we want to establish and are slowly ramping up to do so to put artificial intelligence not on top of the registries itself, but also on the raw data in the clinical setting. So we are now uh, putting in interdisciplinary consortium to create access to the primary and secondary healthcare data and through standardized APIs, really get access to the data and combine the data with artificial intelligence to more timely and faster identify potential side effects and address those immediately in our work. All of this still making sure that we have a consistent regulatory process throughout, fully supporting uh, the way we should keep patients safe uh, with treatment uh, of new medicine. This initiative and a, and a number of other initiatives in the roadmap for the Data Analytics Center is going to apply AI. A few I would like to mention out of our catalog for the next two years is the PKPD modeling and the trial simulation. Here we will partner up with academia to develop new advanced methods to analyze and simulate data. And then across a number of these other streams of analysis, we'll start to see AI and the machine learning techniques play a bigger and bigger role in, uh, con in, in connection to the existing pharmacoepidemiological, uh, more classic methods. All of this really allows us to usher in a new regulatory paradigm. The use of data, use of AI, will be part of how we can provide scientific advice uh, through improving that through quantitative scientific advice based on data in our registries by creating statistics and summary, uh, de defining different populations and informing trial design. In the pre-approval phase, even better support precision medicine and in Europe, the prime initiative for new innovative medicines that need uh, more data support and also more regulatory support. As authorities, we are also now asking to get access, uh, in some cases, to the raw data from industry and analyzing that, which really improves our quality of the review of uh, applications for new medicines. And that also moves into what we've seen with the vaccines, the conditional approvals will expand, we expect. So it will require more data and will require more continuous data for us to get medicines faster uh, and safely uh, to the patients. In the post-approval phase, we have now already established a successful use of uh, using real-world data to understand adverse drug reactions, and we'll continue to do so using the registries, the electronic health records, and the social media data. So already now well underway on changing the regulatory paradigm. If you want to more, learn more about the Data Analytics Center and the Medicine Agency, please go to our website and number of videos and other material out there that will help to keep you informed. Um, and uh, with that, I would like to conclude my presentation here today. And uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, I hope you will have a good rest of the conference. Uh, thank you for, for, for listening in. Goodbye.